Hi everybody, welcome to the vlog. Uh, the age-old question in the world of music history is uh, what was the first rock and roll record? Some people may say it's Bill Haley and the Comets' Rock Around the Clock, which was rock's first bona fide number one hit in the summer of 1955. Maybe you'll go a little bit further back than that and say it's That's Alright Mama, Elvis's first recording for Sun Records in 1954. Uh, maybe you'll look even further back than that and go back to Jackie Brenson and his Delta Cats uh, with Rocket 88 in 1951, uh, which was made by Ike Turner. But for my money, and uh, for a lot of people's money as well, um, it's Fats Domino's first recording for Imperial Records with Dave Bartholomew in 1949. It's a song called The Fat Man. <laughs> Now really it's a rhythm and blues record, uh, that's what Fats always said when rock and roll became a big deal in the mid to late 50s is that he says, when, when, he, when he was asked how did he innovate a new genre, he said I didn't know I was playing rock and roll, I thought it was just rhythm and blues, it's what he's been playing for, for 15 years up to that point. But he had just a certain style and a certain energy to his uh, boogie woogie piano playing that really was new. and. Uh, it's that energy, that young energy that sort of propelled rock and roll. Fats Domino was born in 1928 in New Orleans, Louisiana. His name is Antoine Domino. Um, in the mid-1940s, he began uh, playing in various bands and uh, gained the nickname Fats. Uh, it's not just um, a comment on the fact that he was a... Uh, a large man and a large presence. He it's a it's also he reminded some of his bandmates of Fats Waller uh, in those early days with his piano playing and singing, um, and yeah, his first real recording was uh, the song I previously mentioned, "The Fat Man." He worked with uh, Dave Bartholomew, who was truly a brilliant uh, R and B songwriter and producer uh, for Imperial. He wrote and produced a lot of hits for not only Fats but several other artists. Uh, of this time period and he was uh, a crucial factor in like arranging Fats' tunes and uh, writing tunes and playing trumpet parts on those tunes. Uh, he worked really hard and he was a master at it. Uh, after the success of The Fat Man, which never really crossed over uh, to the white pop market, it was just a huge hit on the, uh, the, the rhythm and blues radio stations of the time period, uh, propelled him into uh, a world of uh, performing just many, many concert dates. He performed all around America in the 50s and then all around the world uh, in the late 50s and beyond. Um, became renowned for just being an excellent uh, live performer. Fats had a few other hits in the first half of the 1950s. He recorded very prolifically during this period, uh, putting out a ton of singles. And he had some other hits with songs like uh, Going to the River and Please Don't Leave Me. Love both of those tracks. Uh, he also was a, just a session musician uh, for Imperial around that time, playing piano on other people's hits, uh, including Fats played piano on the uh, 1952 Lloyd Price tune, Loading Miss Claudie, which became a huge hit. I just heard it on the radio this week. Um, I actually didn't know that that was Fats playing piano on that track until uh, I was researching for this video today. That's uh, fascinating. Uh, he worked very hard uh, through the years with just R&B hit after R&B hit, but he never really uh, crossed over uh, into the pop market until uh, a little song called Ain't That a Shame. You made me cry when you said goodbye. Ain't that a shame? It was by far his biggest hit uh, to date. 
Then in the summer of 1956, uh, he put out what was probably his biggest hit of all time, uh, most certainly his biggest hit of all time. It would become his signature song, a little tune called Blueberry Hill. I found my thrill. was a performance from the Ed Sullivan Show in uh, November of 1956, and thanks to his newfound uh, popularity uh, and his big success on the pop charts, uh, he started to get involved in the world of film and television, and I think that was integral for his career. Uh, it was very important that the general public uh, get to see him, get to know his personality, get to see his stage presence. I do think it's a big part of his success. I, I always think that all that Fats wanted to do with his music was spread joy. If you look at Fats Domino on stage, he's uh, always smiling, and it's, it's not just an act. I don't know, it's just it, Fats Domino concerts were a very joyful experience. Um, I'm sad that I never got a chance to witness him live. Uh, a little bit too young for that, but I would have loved to have seen it. Uh, he played not only on The Sullivan Show, also on uh, American Bandstand and some other shows. And uh, he was in a couple of Alan Freed uh, rock and roll movies uh, around this time. And uh, all this led to just him having a, a whole string of uh, hit singles uh, in the second half of the 1950s. Uh, Fats Domino was as big as it gets, except for maybe Elvis. But <laughs> just an absolute uh, top tier uh, celebrity musician. Between 1956 and 58, he put out uh, such songs as um, Honey Child, um, Blue Monday, I'm In Love Again, I'm Walking, a uh, whole lot of loving, and more. Just all kinds of hits. Uh, he continued to have uh, big successful hits until uh, 1960 or so. He had a couple of major hits in 1960. Uh, a song called Walking to New Orleans came out that year, and that was just huge for him. Uh, also, My Girl Josephine came out that year. Another great song. And he's uh, continuing to uh, sell tons of singles, tons of albums, like the ones I have up behind me, and just making a lot of money for himself and for Imperial Records. And uh, yeah, being a concert draw. Of course, being a concert draw back in those days wasn't the most financially uh, successful thing. You pretty much just toured um, in order to support the sales of your recorded music, which is pretty much the opposite of how the music industry works today. Uh, but anyway, in the early 1960s, um, the success of his singles started to dry up a little bit, but his uh, live shows uh, were still doing well. It was around this time that he started to tour uh, in Europe. A lot of the classic 50s rock and roll acts toured Europe in the early 1960s. The European markets were really getting into rock and roll around that time. Uh, think about it, that's the environment that the Beatles grew up in. Uh, if you've ever watched a lot of Beatles interviews, um, they talk about how super into rock and roll uh, the British public was looking back at, like, not just the 50s, but, you know, 1960, 1961, you know, Bill Haley and his Comets and Little Richard and Fats Domino uh, were all touring over there around that time while... Uh, rock and roll's popularity started to dim just a little bit uh, in the United States. In 1963, Imperial Records uh, moved out of Louisiana, and uh, Fats, although he toured around the world, never wanted to move his home base away from New Orleans, so uh, he actually left the label. Uh, at that time, he went to ABC Paramount and began recording for them. Uh, one of the things that happened around that time, uh, in 1964 to be exact, was Beatlemania, and that created a resurgence uh, in the genre of rock and roll. The Beatles actually cited Fats Domino on a number of occasions as being a major influence for them. Um, but while it did uh, sort of reinvigorate American interest in rock and roll, uh, Fats' recording career uh, never really got back to the same level it did before. He continued to record throughout the 1960s, um, but never really produced any major hits 
to the level of what he had done in the late 50s and early 60s. Um, in 1968, though, the Beatles put out the song Lady Madonna, which was a pretty direct um, homage to the style of Fats Domino. Uh, Paul McCartney has said that in many instances. And then Fats actually went and he recorded that song uh, in 1969. I always thought he did a good job with it, too. Uh, it wasn't really a major hit, and it wound up being one of the last songs he would record. Uh, by the early 1970s, he pretty much uh, retired from recording music as he was making enough money from his uh, live shows and from his uh, royalties. Because his old songs just never stopped selling. The uh, records from the 50s and early 60s uh, were perennial sellers, did very well for him. Uh, and in the 70s, yeah, he just uh, spent his time out on the road performing through not only the 70s but the 80s. Uh, Dave Bartholomew was back with him around that time, uh, taking part in some of his uh, touring activities with him uh, around that time. Um, and Fats, yeah, enjoyed being out on the road until uh, about the late 80s. Uh, by the end of the 1980s, Fats Domino had entered his early 60s himself and he was starting to uh, get a little bit road weary. Just wanted to uh, settle down in New Orleans. But he was honored to get respect from a whole new generation in the late 80s. Uh, sparked by him being inducted among the first class of inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. Fats is visibly moved uh, at the awards ceremony. I have to say thanks to Atlantic Records. And it is a pleasure being here with the great artists that have been on stage before I came on tonight, like Ray Charles, Chuck Berry, all of them great, Jan Brown, but I wish that Elvis Presley, Sam Cooke, and Buddy Holly were still living to be... I wish they were still living to be here with us tonight. Fats continued to do some sporadic touring in the 90s, but he really preferred to be at home in New Orleans. He wound up getting uh, ill during a uh, tour of the UK in 1995 and just had a rough time out on the road for that little three-week tour. And he just basically vowed he would never tour again. He would never leave Louisiana again. He was tired of being out on the road, and frankly, one of the things he said is, well, Louisiana just has better food. Can't fault him for that. But also, yeah, it's just it's just where he was most comfortable. There's a lot of uh, rock and rollers out there who I've covered on my channel who are these larger-than-life figures. Fats is almost a smaller-than-life figure, and I mean that in the best possible way. He was, uh, by all accounts, a very nice, very humble, and very shy man who... Um, I have to think was happy to step out of the limelight and back into his home in New Orleans in 1995. Uh, he kept true to his word, he never toured again, uh, but what he did do every year after that, he would perform every year at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Um, and this event every year became sort of not only an important event uh, to the city of New Orleans, but also uh, Fats Domino fans uh, from across America and across the world uh, would come to witness this as the one and only Fats Domino performing event of any given year. And he did a great job uh, putting on shows at that festival uh, into the 2000s. His final performance at the uh, Jazz and Heritage Festival took place in 2004, by which point Fats Domino was 76. Um, and then in 2005, uh, as we all know, uh, something terrible happened to the city of New Orleans uh, when Hurricane Katrina struck. Uh, it not only canceled that festival, uh, for a very brief window of time, the Fats' fans feared the worst. Uh, rumors started to emerge that Fats had been killed uh, when his home totally flooded, uh, was in one of the heaviest uh, flood areas in New Orleans. Um, someone even went as far as to spray paint 
rest in peace fats you will be missed on the front of his house which i mean was not only later proven untrue that he didn't pass away i don't know it's it's weird how it was it seems as though it was intended as a sign of respect but it doesn't feel all that respectful to spray paint that onto someone's house to me but anyway um thankfully he was actually totally fine he was uh, rescued by helicopter off of the roof of his house um but yeah the city that he knew and loved was devastated by the events of the hurricane and he wanted to do anything he could to help uh he wound up putting out an album in 2006 yes an album he hadn't released music in like over 35 years at this point he put out an album called alive and kickin uh, in 2006 with all the proceeds going to the Tipitinas Foundation. For a while he was uh, supposed to perform at the 2006 New Orleans uh, Jazz and Heritage Festival as well, uh, but he wound up canceling that event um, due to ill health, but apparently some have suggested that he just was suffering a bad case of stage fright having never performed in a couple of years. He was known to get some pretty bad stage fright during his life. Uh, like I said, all the proceeds from the uh, Alive and Kickin' album went to um, the Tipitinas Foundation. Tipitinas was actually a musical venue, a club in New Orleans, which was sort of a center uh, a hub of the uh, music scene over there. And they'd been begging Fats Domino to come back and perform a concert there for years. But like I said, he's a very, very shy man. Uh, he was essentially retired and he he seemed reluctant to do it but in may of 2007 he finally did it he finally agreed to play one night only at the tipitinas club fats domino by this point was 79 years old and he comes out walks on stage and just a miracle happens i think that this concert is one of the coolest events ever uh fats like i said quite an older man now, comes out and just performs like young Fats. He looks and sounds like he did 50 years earlier. It's really crazy just how good this performance is. Yes, This performance was made into an excellent documentary that I'll link to in the description and was just a very, very cool thing to see. Fats, after all these years, still rocking, and it would go down to be his last full public appearance. He fully retired after that, uh, spending the rest of his days at his home in New Orleans. Uh, a, a, a news uh, organization uh, did film a really cool piece in his house in 2010 where they brought uh, the legendary Dave Bartholomew uh, back to uh, Fats' house to have a little reunion with him and they sang a couple of classic Fats tunes. There's an episode also of a TV show called, uh, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, I think it's called Trem, I'm not sure, T-R-E-M-E, -E, where uh, in 2012 they made an episode uh, all about making a pilgrimage uh, to New Orleans, to Fats Domino's house, and they go inside and they actually filmed a bit in his house talking to the legendary Fats himself, who at 84 sings a short snippet of Blueberry Hill. I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill, on Blueberry Hill, when I was drinking beer. <laughs> and that was pretty much his last real public appearance. Um, like I said, he lived out the rest of his days comfortably at home in uh, New Orleans and eventually passed away in 2017 uh, at the age of 89 
his musical legacy uh, lives on. He means so much to the city of New Orleans, to the state of Louisiana, and to the world of music. Um, in this last year, I've been listening to more and more of his music, and he's quickly becoming just one of my favorites of all time. He was amazing. Like I said, he had no pretense about him. He just seemed to want to make people happy through music, and he will be remembered for that. Uh, on another note, Dave Bartholomew lived a very long life. He passed away just a year or two ago at the age of 100. Um, so a good long life, a good well-deserved long life for both of them. Uh, true musical legends who are just incredibly important to the world of rock and roll. Uh, check out some Fats Domino music if you haven't already. It's incredible. You wouldn't really be watching this video if you hadn't already done that, though. Um, yeah, I just love him. Thank you so much to everybody for watching. That'll do it for this video. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a musician myself, and you can check out links to where you can find my music, uh, where it can be found online, sold and streamed online in the description. Uh, like this video if you like what you saw. Subscribe to this channel if you've been enjoying my videos. And you can also ring the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video, uh, which should be really soon. Uh, I try to do at least one upload a week. Sometimes I'll do like three or four if I feel like it. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll catch you guys again real soon.